With that said, here is the announcement I know many of you have been waiting to hear. Because of the dramatic decline in our COVID numbers, effective Monday, March 7th, the statewide school mask mandate will be lifted. Additionally, we will lift the statewide mandate in all childcare settings. Later this week, we will extend the public health emergency by 30 days to allow for this mask mandate to continue until then and then be responsibly lifted. As we have with other similar actions, we're announcing this with plenty of advance notice for our schools and childcare settings, for our students and their families, our educators and support staff to determine how this will impact them and to finalize any steps they may need to make in preparation. Masking continues to be an important tool to prevent the spread of COVID and should be used in many circumstances. In the coming weeks, the Department of Health will also be updating, under Judy's leadership, will also be updating its guidance to help school districts make the best decisions as to whether and when masks uh, should be worn. I must thank the overwhelming majority of students, parents, administrators, educators, and support staffers who stood tall as role models ever since our schools returned to in-person instruction by wearing your masks day in and day out without problem or protest. You truly represent our highest New Jersey values of selflessness, community spirit, collective responsibility, looking out for others. You are the reason why we're ready to take this step. A couple of things to note. We are removing the statewide requirement that all students, educators, staff, and visitors wear masks while indoors. Again, effective uh, March 7. We are not removing the ability of individual district leaders to maintain and enforce such a policy within their schools or any private child care provider from maintaining such a policy within their business should community conditions require. Likewise, any student, educator, or staff member, or visitor who chooses to continue masking up while indoors may freely do so. And we expect that schools will take swift disciplinary action against those who may try to demean or bully anyone who chooses to wear a mask. We will not tolerate anyone being put down by exercising their choice to mask up. We can responsibly take this step given the continuing drop in new cases and hospitalizations from Omicron and with all the evidence projecting a continued decline over the coming weeks. And we are also buoyed by the continued growth in vaccinations and the expectation that the vaccines will be made available to children under the age of five in early March. And we strongly encourage parents of school-aged children to have your child vaccinated. Additionally, although I was quoted as saying it's not the 4th of July, I admit, but early March traditionally means the weather starts to warm up at least a bit, and Pat, you'll make sure that that happens, which will give schools a little bit more flexibility to increase ventilation, be more creative with that, and further decrease the risk of COVID spread. And perhaps most importantly, this is a huge step back to normalcy for our kids. As I mentioned last week, I had the honor of being with Arkansas Governor Asa Hutchison on Meet the Press. And by the way, alongside Governor Hutchison, I'm honored to help lead the National Governors Association. We're not, and we've said this many times here, we're not going to manage COVID to zero. We have to learn how to live with COVID as we move from a pandemic to the endemic phase of this virus. To be sure, we've known this for a long time. And we are optimistic that given the decreased severity of this new variant and the continued increase in vaccinations that we are finally nearing this inflection point. I've said many times that we would act deliberately in all we do in response to the pandemic. The mask mandate has been part of a many layered approach to being able to safely keep our schools open because we know that remote learning is an inadequate substitute for learning in person. We have tried, as we've said many times, to meet the moment, not to undershoot it, putting lives at risk, or to overshooting it, only adding to mental health and stress that we know exists up and down the state. And the numbers bear out the effectiveness of this approach. You can see here over the past number of weeks. Yes, the overall rates of infection among all students and educational 
staff, regardless of where that exposure occurred, has dropped off significantly over the past month. And by the way, this is not with regard specific only to in school. This is all COVID as it relates to students and staff. But since the beginning of the 2021-22 school year, there have been roughly, as you can see, not roughly exactly, 2,635 student cases, 503 staff or educator cases, and those were all spread across 465 specific uh, outbreaks. Keep in mind, by the way, 2,635 students out of 1.4 million students, um, 465 outbreaks out of about 3,500 school buildings. While we didn't want to keep any mandates in force for a moment longer than necessary, at the same time, the last thing we wanted to do was to pull back too early, endanger our students and their families, or educators and staff, and make it more likely that outbreaks would force schools to close. Again, as I said last week, every time you think you've got this thing figured out, it humbles you. But we are confident that four weeks from now, we will be able to be at the point with regard to the statewide school mask mandate that we have announced. One of the things that I am most proud of, and Judy and her team, including Ed, deserve a lot of credit here, a lot of the credit. Um, one of the things I'm most proud of uh, in our overall pandemic response is that we're the state that did, that did not ride the roller coaster on again, off again, two steps forward, one step back restrictions that many other states have been through. I think in every case across the board, we have not re-implemented any significant restrictions after them been limited. Decisions like these, balancing public health with the need to get back to some semblance of normalcy are not easy. If we are to err, I would much rather be it on the side of protecting public health. There are issues that are and must always remain above politics. The health and safety of our residents, and especially our kids, is not just among them, but it is arguably the most important of them. So again, Monday, March 7th, the indoor masking requirement in our schools and daycare settings will be lifted.